as we know, for Wordsworth, memory is everything. But memory for Wordsworth was ultimately about recovery. You recall that we talked about the various spots of time in his life, primarily his childhood life in the Lake District. As an adult, he would remember these times, such as the time he stole the boat and felt the mountains chasing him. He would remember these times as an adult to energize his present. So ultimately, lost time for Wordsworth was an invitation to recover time through imaginative memory. De Quincey, profoundly influenced by Wordsworth, uh, Wordsworth was everything to De Quincey. Uh, we will talk about that um, in another lecture. For De Quincey, memory was everything as well. But for De Quincey, memory was not an act of recovery. For De Quincey, memory was always a marker of loss. Uh, loss of what? Loss of love, loss of beauty, loss of innocence, and the guilt that would follow the loss of innocence. The first experience that really affected De Quincey profoundly was the loss of his sister Elizabeth. She was nine, he was six. This was when he was living in the family mansion in Manchester, Green Hay, huge mansion. Had grand stairs in the front of the house that the family used, smaller stairs in the back of the house that the servants use. The day after Elizabeth died, according to De Quincey of Hydrocephalus, she was in her bedroom with the door closed awaiting not only the funeral but also awaiting the physicians to come and perform an autopsy on her. Well De Quincey, six years old, very precocious and curious, he snuck up the back stairs, the servant stairs, and he walked to the room of Elizabeth closed, the door was closed, but he found the key in the door and he unlocked it and he walked in and he saw his dead sister. And this was a memory that he never forgot. He writes about it later in life in some of his autobiographical work. Um, here's what he says. He walks into the room, it's summer, high summer, hot. The window is open, a hot breeze is blowing through the window. And just as he kisses her frozen eyelids, that's how he puts it, this is what happens. A solemn wind began to blow, the saddest that ear ever heard. It was a wind that might have swept the fields of mortality for a thousand centuries. And then it appears to this imaginative young child as if a vault in heaven opened in the zenith of the far blue sky and a shaft which ran up forever. I, in spirit, rose as if on billows that also ran up the shaft forever and the billows seemed to pursue the throne of God. But that also ran before us and fled away continually. The flight and the pursuit seemed to go on forever and ever. Frost gathering frost, some sarsar wind of death seemed to repel me. So after this vision, what happens? He tells us. He hears a foot on the stair as if he's been caught doing something transgressive. And he says, I slunk like a guilty thing with stealthy steps from the room. So in some ways, throughout the rest of his writing life, De Quincey longed for some kind of feminine presence um, that he associated with, with beauty and grandeur, but also a feminine presence that is lost to him, taken away from him. And this moment of the presence, the female presence being taken away from him, um, not only marks loss, but also it marks guilt, um, a sense that somehow he has done something wrong and is being punished. So we see the words will show up in moments like this because of the idea that memory is just as powerful as a present perception. But we see Milton show up fairly profoundly as well, we do with Wordsworth too, uh, the sense that um, certain memories are markers of loss, loss of innocence, and ensuing guilt. Now how does this show up in Confessions of the English Opium Eater? Well, it's pretty obvious. Uh, we see the young De Quincey in London, uh, homeless, starving, uh, 
barely alive and he befriends a young prostitute named Anne and she helps him on various occasions uh, most markedly one day he's so hungry he passes out young De Quincey does and she uses her own earnings her own meager earnings to find him some spiced wine which he drinks and he feels recovery he recovers immediately he feels recovered immediately well sometime after when the young De Quincey goes in search of, of money he leaves London to try to visit an old friend um, again in search of funds and um, when he comes back he looks for Anne and he never finds her again and he feels as if this is a, a terrible moment in his life he writes about it very passionately in this part of the book Confessions of an English Opium Eater um, here's what he says when realizing that he would probably never see her again in the London streets he says um, I continued to look for her for the rest of my life. Really, whenever I went to London, I would look for the face of Anne. During some years, I hoped that she did live, um, and I suppose that in the literal and unrhetorical use of the word myriad, I may say that on my different visits to London, I have looked into many, many myriads of female faces in the hope of meeting her. I should know her again amongst a thousand if I saw her for a moment. For though not handsome, she had a sweet expression of countenance and a peculiar graceful carriage of the head. I sought her, I have said, in hope. So it was for years. But now I should fear to see her, and her cough, which grieved me when I parted with her, is now my consolation. I now wish to see her no longer, but think of her more gladly as one long since laid in the grave. In the grave, I would hope, of a Magdalen taken away before injuries and cruelty had blotted out and transfigured her ingenious, ingenuous, ingenuous nature, or the brutalities of ruffians had completed the ruin they had begun. So Anne becomes a sort of ideal of charity and, and grace that he's lost, and he spends the rest of his day, his day searching for that unsuccessfully. Um, and at times he wants to find her, but other times he wishes that she were dead because certainly as a prostitute, a young prostitute in London, she would have lived a terrible life. So as you read through Confessions of an English Opium Eater, especially the early parts, um, think about those in this, this Wordsworthian context um, as memories that inform the adult De Quincey, but Wordsworth reversed um, as moments of innocence that might not be recovered, but that are in fact lost and if they do live again, they live only in the nightmares of the Quincy's various opium trips.